He said, no, 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 you don't get it. I said, well, Patrick, what don't I get? Oh my gosh, can you believe what Tebow said? That's crazy, right? No way he lives up. And they're just crushing me on this elevator. Actually, supposedly, there are so many people tweeting about it that Twitter actually stopped. This story blew my mind away. Loyal seven-figure squad YouTube subscribers and to also very many new potential YouTube subscribers to our Seven Figure Squad community. You are in for a special episode, but it won't be an easy one to hear. So what am I talking about? Well, today I'll be covering three reasons why you, sadly, will never become a first generation cash flow millionaire and how to change that in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad happening in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Like. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago, and today's episode, and the purpose of today's episode is not to scare you away from becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire, but more importantly, this episode and this video is meant to help you identify the three reasons why you will never become a millionaire and how, more importantly, to fix that. And why is today's episode very special? Well, in order to help me facilitate helping describe why, I am providing in this episode a never before seen inside look at an interview I did on stage in front of 2,000 people in Louisville, Kentucky a couple months ago in the middle of one of biggest snowstorms that the Northern American states have ever seen with none other than college football legend, Heisman Trophy winner, two-time NCAA champion of NFL first round draft pick and also a New York Times bestseller, Tim Tebow. Speaking of which, I want to announce right away a giveaway we're doing in this episode. Mash that like button, why? Because once we hit 500 likes, I'll be selecting a comment from the section below of a winner of your biggest takeaway in the comment section below, and they will be winning a Tim Tebow signed book. This is the day, and to add to that, once we get to 500 likes and the best takeaway written in the comment section below, I will also be adding a signed copy of Wall Street Journal's number one best-selling book from my CEO mentor, Patrick Ben David. your next five moves. So again, the criteria, we got to get this video to 500 likes and drop your best, biggest takeaway in the comment section below. And uh, here by end of business today, we'll be selecting a winner of these two great books by Tim Tebow and Patrick but David. Your next five moves and this is the day. So again, this interview was conducted live at a recent event we did here in February in Louisville, Kentucky, in the midst of a snowstorm. Then in spite of the difficulties to get to Louisville, Kentucky, we still had two to 3,000 people show up for this event. It was a massive, massive show of will to get to a live event. We had people socially distant. We had people wearing masks and people yet still made it out there in spite of the difficulties and challenges with the weather and cancel flights to get to Louisville, Kentucky. Now, what you say, can a college football legend and former NFL quarterback have to teach a bunch of insurance agents building their own business about money and becoming a millionaire and why should you care? It's very simple. If you have been a subscriber to the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel, you have to know that in order to build a financial home that stands the test of time for the long game, creating generational wealth, it must be built on two solid foundations of values, and principles. And I can't think of anybody better than Tim Tebow to share with us how to lay down that foundation of values and principles. Now, here's three reasons why you will never become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Number one, you only chase success, not significance. You see, most people can make money. You can make millions of dollars. Yes, you can. But we're looking for sustainable income, sustainable millions of dollars of income coming in to fuel and finance your passions, your destiny, because money is just simply that. It is a tool. That's all it is. I've said that over and over and over and also reinforced on Sunday nights to our Seven Figure Squad scripture series, because you and I are not defined by the car we drive or the house we live in, that the material 
and traditional measures of success is not what you and I should be ultimately after. It's what that money can do for you and other people that is a true measure of success and what really matters. So my friends, you sadly will never become a first generation cash flow millionaire if all you do is chase money and success and not any form of significance. It's virtually impossible to keep that up over the long term sustainable time frame. So what do I mean? Let's check this out. You see, I want you to be successful. I believe in success. I believe whatever our hand finds to do, do, do it with all your might as unto the Lord. I believe that we can want to be successful. Let me just tell you something. I have never played in a game that I have wanted to lose. <laughs> I want to win. And I want to be successful. But more than being successful, I want to be significant. I want to be significant. And you know, I, I believe success is about me. But significance is when I focus on other people. And you know, success is about you. But significance is when you focus on other people. But I want to encourage you something tonight, is you can turn your success into significance. We all can turn our success, our platforms, our relationships, our finances, our opportunity, all of it, we can turn that success into significance when we stop looking at us or me or mine, but we start looking at other people. We can turn our success into significance. You know, the founder of Publix was a guy named George Jenkins. George, on his deathbed, allowed one journalist to come and do an interview on his deathbed. And this young reporter, this hotshot reporter, was asking all of these questions about finances and all of these things because George Jenkins made so much money in his life, starting Publix, and Publix took off, and, and George was also known for, um, for giving people with special needs an opportunity to work at Publix's, which they still do to this day, and he was also known for giving away so much money. So the, he just said, Mr. Jenkins, the last question, la sorry to bother you, but last question, is Mr. Jenkins, if you wouldn't given away so much money, how much would you be worth? And Mr. Jenkins just looks at this young hotshot reporter and said, son, probably nothing. Woo! Tim Tebow with the mic drop. You see, he explained it perfectly with the story of George Jenkins. At the time of his death, he passed away with a billion dollars. And even then, without the significance of what he created with that company called Publix and the impact he made on others, he'd be absolutely worth zero. So my friends, chase significance, not necessarily success. And if you are already successful, you got it. It's your job and duty to pay it forward and allow others to follow in your footsteps because there's a big difference between a salesperson and a sales leader, between being a sales manager and becoming a business owner and becoming a business owner, becoming an actual wartime CEO. As a quick personal revelation, when I transitioned out of the military, I got involved in the insurance business not because of passion, but because I was looking to survive. But after I got involved in the insurance industry, after I got involved in helping clients and finding the significance of my work and the nobility of the financial assistance I was able to create in people's families that have been overlooked and underserved years later, I discovered the significance of my success. So some of you may say, Matt, you know, I'm a millionaire or I'm making 500,000 a year or I'm making $10 million a year. I'm successful, I'm significant, right? Well, not necessarily so. But if you find the impact of what you're doing and your drive happens to evolve from there, that what you're doing is just not building a $10 million company, $100 million company, more importantly, the significance and impact you're in creating jobs, helping people not get laid off through your company by expanding your enterprise in spite of the pandemic, in spite of hard times and tough times, that you're able to surpass all that, that is now living a life of significance, of impact, of change, of making a difference, not just status, and improving simply just the bottom line. Number two, the second reason why you'll never become a first generation cash flow millionaire is because you are 
easily torn down by others and the opinions of other people about you. Becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire is not seeking out to live a normal life. In fact, less than 1% of all United States American households make more than a million dollars a year. So please, you have to understand that you and our goals are not normal. You know, on a side note I say, I don't wanna be normal, because most people are normally broke. Now, if you factor in all the things you need to live in the neighborhood you wanna live in, the car you wanna drive, the, the, the ministries, the nonprofits you wanna fund and finance, the assistance you wanna help with providing help to your loved ones, the lifestyle you wanna live, travel, vacation, time with your children, guess what? If the, all those things add up, if we're actually putting a number towards those things, you are actually nearing towards making a million dollars a year to make a lot of those things happen. See, the statistics are daunting enough. If you add to that, the opinions of other people about what you want to accomplish and their doubts of what you can or will not accomplish and what you're not capable of. My friends, you'll never make it carrying those opinions around. You see, I asked Tim Tebow specifically about the speech he made after a tough loss where they're expecting a perfect season. And Tim Tebow shared his infamous The Promise speech in which he promised the nation on a national press conference that you'll never see a play work as hard as he will for the rest of the season. I mean, wow, <laughs> imagine saying that. Put your name and reputation on the line publicly. And today it's remembered now as a noble speech that this brave and courageous leader at such a young age gave before that year winning a national championship. But what did people think initially after he made that speech? Let's check this out. But you know, you know what's funny about that is people talk about it positively. So I, I walk out of that press conference and I, I walk in the locker room, I put on a hat and a hoodie and I kind of throw it over and I'm walking and I get in the elevator and there's a, I get in first and I walk to the back and there's a bunch of people that walk in front of me and they're all media and the, the doors close and we're riding up the elevator and they're like, oh my gosh, can you believe what Tebow said? That's crazy, right? No way he lives up. And they're just crushing me on this elevator and I'm in the back of this thing and they're like, no chance that he lives up to that and blah, 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 blah. So guys, you know what? When you do what's on your heart and you share what you truly believe, you know what? That, that didn't turn out to be positive till a long time later. So you might have a lot of critics that don't understand it or maybe don't get it at the moment, but we don't do it for the people that don't get it. We do it for the people in our room and our family you know, that we're trying to share with, that we're trying to impact. And so that's also you know, hopefully something that's encouraging in that is that didn't become a plaque till after we won the natty. You see, did you hear that? A speech that is now honored remains on a plaque there at University of Florida campus. And that plaque, before it became a plaque, was heavily laughed at. Because imagine if he didn't come through. Would that plaque be up there? Absolutely not. You see, the same people that were laughing at Tim Tebow for his wise declaration are now the same people that are praising him for his accomplishments. You see, it's the same in business. Forget the opinions of other people. Tune them out and you get to work because if you don't they are right and they become louder and louder and louder you see once you blocked out all the noise you can focus on keeping the main thing the main thing and do what you need to get done to become a first generation cash flow millionaire number three third reason why you never become a first generation cash flow millionaire is this you lose sight of the big picture now this is a reference to John 3, 16. Say what? A Bible scripture? Yes. Stay with me. For the very few of you thus far that's made it this deep in this episode, you mean business. And as soon as I mentioned a Bible scripture, many of you have already tuned out of this video completely. But for the few of you that are still watching this episode and still here, you must ask yourself this question. Why do I want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire? Why the long nights? Why travel from Seattle to Chicago, to Dallas, to Boca Raton, to Tennessee, to Louisville. Why? Why constantly put myself under the pressure to perform? Because you see, without the context of the bigger picture, making money is just that, making money. So in this clip of Tim Tebow talking about the infamous John 316 story, he'll also catch Tim forgetting about the big picture. And by the way, this story blew my mind away. 
Let's check this out. And I, I'm getting ready to walk through these huge curtains, just like the ones there, to walk into this room that's full of media. And right before I open it, Patrick, our PR guy, steps in front. He's like, Timmy, did you realize what happened? I'm like, yeah, we just beat the Steelers. We're going to play the Patriots. And he's like, no, 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 you don't realize what happened. I said, Patrick, what? what? I could tell there's a serious look on it. So I said, Patrick, so tell me what, what happened, man? And he said, Timmy, it's exactly three years from the night that you wore John 3.16 under your eyes and all that stuff happened. I was like, oh, well, that's really cool, man. He said, no, 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 you don't get it. And I said, what, Patrick, what don't I get? He said, Timmy, during that game, not only was it exactly three years from the night you wore it under your eyes, but you threw for 316 yards. And... It, that's not even the coolest part. And then he said, your yards per rush were 3.16. And your yards per completion were 31.6. And the time of possession was 31.6. And... <laughs> And the ratings for the night were 31.6. And, and during the game, over 90 million people Google John 316, and it was the number one trending thing on all social media at the time. And, and actually, supposedly, there are so many people tweeting about it that Twitter actually stopped. And I was like, can that happen? I didn't really say that. But you know what? I was just sitting in that hallway getting ready to walk into that press conference after our PR guy told me all of that. And you would have probably thought I would have celebrated like you just did right there, but I didn't. Because honestly, my first thought was really shame. Because in my heart and my head on that night, that night was about a game. And it was about winning. And it was about proving the doubters wrong. It was about overcoming. It was about winning a playoff game. And I remember standing there in that hallway and then having him tell me all of this. And it was like God touching my heart and my head and reminding me, hey, Timmy, it's never just about a game. I didn't put you here for a game. It's never just about a game. Your life isn't about a game. It's so much more than a game. And hey, by the way, I didn't send my son for a game. Because you see, it's more than just the game. It's more than just making a million dollars. It's more than just making it to the top of the leader's bulletin and having material success. Not having a constant reminder of why you do this to begin with and reminding yourself of the bigger picture will cause you to lose picture of your why. And once you lose sight of that and you get caught up in the moment, whether it be for a day, for a week, for a month, for a year, for five or 10 years, it's over. And you can kiss your multi-million dollar dreams and legacy and generational wealth creation goodbye. And so as I wrap up, I wanna leave you with this. If you've identified one of these reasons or two of these or all of the above, please do not panic. You can work on any of these and improve. Thankfully, thankfully, business to many extent is very forgiving. We learn a lot from our failures. More so, you can implement systems and processes and procedures to make sure you never fall into these three traps. The fact that you've even made it to the end of this episode is an accomplishment in itself. People don't like to hear their faults, but if you made it thus far, drop it in the comment section below. I will become a first generation millionaire. And also as a reminder for the giveaway at the beginning of this episode, once we get to 500 likes and you drop your biggest takeaway from this video thus far, we'll be giving away a book from Tim Tebow signed by him. This is the day. What a wonderful book this is. And also a book from my mentor, CEO, is Your Next Five Moves here at Wall Street Journal, number one best-selling book. Both of them signed an autograph from us to you for the person that brings 
the best takeaway in the comment section below. And before I let you go, check out this video here, which is the harsh reality of becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. Is it easy? No, but it is simple. How? Check out this video on connecting the dots. And the second video here is a real reason why the rich get richer, a video to help expose and define clarity in finding your why. And before I let you go, if you haven't done so already, make sure you drop your thoughts, your comments, your follow-ups, your feedback, your questions in the comment section below. And if you haven't done so, also put your biggest takeaway so we can select you to become a potential winner of these two books. So please, if you're watching this on Facebook, please click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.